UV mapping. You spend hours meticulously modeling your 3D assets, you extrude multiple faces, bevel many edges, and subdivide your mesh to sculpt it, then retopologize it. And after extended periods of dedicated focus and hard work, you are done with the hard part. And all is left is the easy, straightforward texturing part. And you get this fulfilling sense of satisfaction that you are finally done until you realize you are not done. You have to UV map it until you get to texturing. And this in of itself is a painful task, almost as painful as the retopology process. But what if I told you that there is an alternative solution? Well, this is when PTAX comes in. Throughout this video, we will be giving you all there is to know about UV mapping and PTAX, and which one is better. Starting off by a simple question, what is a UV map? Well, a UV map is that flat 2D surface representation of a 3D model that is used to unwrap textures. The process of creating a UV map is called UV unwrapping which is done using a 3D modeling software such as Blender, Maya, Max, Cinema 4D, and so on. 3D artists working with this type of software are always looking to create new and different textures to apply to their 3D models. A wide variety of textures results in more realistic models. So using UV maps allows artists to use the same 3D models for whatever textures they desire. And this proves to be efficient in many industries, whether it be offline rendering or real-time rendering engines. This way, you as an artist, you can instance or iterate your 3D models and scenes with ease. Now, PTAX on the other hand is more of a cheat code, especially when it comes to texturing, a totally different approach to texture your 3D models. But what in the world is PTAX then? The short answer is no more UV mapping, or anything similar to that. You want to texture this model? Just texture it right away. PTAX or Perface Texturing is a texture mapping system developed by Walt Disney Animation Studios as an alternative to traditional methods of texture mapping. It addresses various issues associated with traditional texture mapping by eliminating the need for artists to manually create UV maps. With PTAX, each face or geometry has its own unique textures. So instead of using a single texture image for the whole model, PTEX uses a separate texture for each polygon face on the model. This eliminates the need for seams, distortion, and stretching that can occur when using UV mapping. This allows for the possibility of dynamically changing the resolution of textures on individual groups or faces, which means infinite graphical fidelity. And this is why Disney has been using it for many years. Before we continue, I want to let you know guys about CG Circuit, which is a valuable resource for content creators and artists from all walks of computer graphics like video games, film, and everything else in between. CG Circuit offers access to a long list of educational materials as well as ready-to-use resources, elements, assets, and more in a single platform. So if you are a professional 3D artist, enthusiast, or a hobbyist, this platform has something for you. You can even earn money by sharing knowledge and you can take advantage of what the platform offers, including the learning materials and assets which are used by industry-leading companies and professionals. To know more about CG Circuit, you can follow the link in the description down below. Now, knowing that both UV mapping and PTAX share the same purpose which is applying two images to 3D models, and both having the same goal of making the models look more realistic and appealing by relying on some form of projection, which means mapping the texture image onto the model surface based on a certain angle or direction. And the fact that both methods support various types of texture maps, such as diffuse, normal, specular, or displacement is great, and can add more depth and detail to the model. So now, one might wonder, What's so different about UV mapping and PTAX? Well, the main difference between UV mapping and PTAX is the way they handle the texture image and the model's geometry. You see, UV mapping uses a single texture image for the whole model, which means that the image has to be unwrapped and laid out in a way that matches the model's shape, and this involves manually cutting out projected edges from the model into separate pieces or simply having a one long cut on your UV shell if the object is simple enough, and this is how seams are created. 
Seams are the visible line on the model where the textures don't connect simply because there are two UV shells or parts of different sections on the model. And that's why artists do their best to carefully place those seams in areas that are least visible. This method altogether can be a complex and time-consuming process, and it can introduce errors such as visible seams, distortions, or stretching. P-Tex, on the other hand, is a straightforward texturing method where you don't have to worry about scaling, rotating, and placing your UVs, not cutting them in the first place. It uses multiple texture images for each phase on the model, which means that the texture image does not have to be unwrapped or laid out. This can simply speed up the texturing process big time, and it can avoid errors such as seams, distortions, or stretching, and most importantly, save up a whole bunch of time. Another difference between UV mapping and P-Tags is the level of flexibility and compatibility they offer. UV mapping is more complex and compatible because it allows for editing and modifying the texture image in any 2D software, and it can be exported and imported in various 3D programs and formats. On the other hand, P-Tags is less flexible and compatible with other software because it requires a specific software and format to create and edit the texture images and it is not supported by all 3D software and engines. And even though it is great, it is not very popular. Now, I will talk about their strengths and weaknesses in various use cases, like the form 3D models, fur, hard surface models, characters, when we have a lot of seams, in addition to font size comparison, performance, quality, and so on. Now, to put things into perspective, even though both texture methods are good and widely used to a certain extent, they both still have their pros and cons. So when it comes to UV mapping, artists have a total freedom when it comes to texturing their models. It offers precise control over how textures are applied to 3D models, allowing you to create intricate and detailed designs and textures only when and where you need it. UV mapping also allows for an efficient usage of textures as it optimizes textures used by minimizing texture space especially the wasted space, and allowing textures to be shared among different parts of a model, and saving up a bunch of video memory. One other critical advantage of UV mapping is compatibility. UV maps can be exported and shared across different software and platforms, making them a widely supported technique in the industry, and the oldest one I might add. Now, the downsides of this method are quite obvious at this point. It introduces a complex workflow that involves a laborious process of unwrapping the 3D model onto a 2D plane, which can be time-consuming and challenging, especially when done repetitively on big projects. In addition to working on complex geometry, in this case, it's gonna be really, really tedious. In addition to the fact that it introduces distortions and undesired seams. As for P-Tags, it is quite easy to be honest. Because it offers a simplified workflow by directly assigning textures to individual faces or polygons, reducing the need for UV mapping, and also the fact that it offers a seamless texturing, and this comes handy, especially when dealing with irregular and complex geometry. It does sound too good to be true, right? But of course, this comes at a cost. Well, P-Tags is heavily memory intensive because each face or polygon requires a separate texture and this can be a concern for a large or detailed models. And of course, a limited software support, which could pose challenges when exchanging assets between different tools, taking out game engines, such as Unreal Engine and Unity out of the equation, which is a big problem, especially for game developers. At the end of the day, both texturing methods are excellent picks for the right case and the right people which depends on the specific project requirements and the complexity of the 3D model, in addition to the available resources and the balance between artistic control and technical efficiency that is desired by the artist or the developer. UV mapping provides detailed control but demands meticulous work, while p simplifies the process but might have some memory implications. Though it is clear and widely known that UVs are future-proof and serves all kinds of purposes and use cases, whether it be in the gaming industry, animation, VFX, or generally speaking the 3D industry in general as a whole, because you as an artist have probably gotten used to it and you use it in your workflow, 
and it makes sense for all intents and purposes. But who knows, maybe we'll get a time where PTX is more accessible, with less constraints and less hardware limitations. So guys, I hope you found this video useful and informative, if you did, please give it a thumbs up, you can also check some of our previous videos, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.